Okay, we're back online. Thank you, Mauro. And we're very honored that you can actually join us today. And thank you for supporting the community, the Red Team Village, uh, the DEF CON Red Team Village, as well as the Texas Cyber Summit. Uh, the floor is yours, so please take it away. Okay, thank you, Omar, for inviting me. And good day to all. My name is Mauro Casares, and I'm going to give my talk, COVID-1994, about propaganda and surveillance during a pandemic. Let's start. I'll make a brief introduction. I'm Mauro Elish, as I said before. I'm a cybersecurity architect, and I'm the founder of DC, the Front Group Argentina, 5411. I spoke at some conferences before, and I worked for the government for the last, say, nine, 10 years. And the objective of this talk is to summarize and to explain the political situation that is currently happening in Argentina and that uh, many of you may find uh, particularly familiar to your countries. And this will be explained from a hacker's point of view, experts in housing, social engineering, and even reverse engineering somewhat. Uh, my talk is divided in two chapters. The propaganda, the first one, that talks about the Argentine pro-government propaganda apparatus on social networks, especially on Twitter and WhatsApp and seen from within, because uh, this talk focuses on implanting a sock puppet account inside this apparatus in order to study and review its internal operation, right? Expert scene, as I said before, social engineering and OSINT. On the second one, for those who prefer the reverse engineering and the code review things, and the second chapter is about surveillance on the Cuidar COVID-19 mobile application. You know that it's a, a sort of a trend that governments are creating tracking applications. Well, Argentina is not the exception. So with the particularity that this application was tried to be made mandatory by law, and obviously it encountered a great resistance. We'll try to dissect this application and uncover their various privacy use issues, its bad practices on security, and a lot of material that you probably have seen before on the subreddit, programming horror, and the like. And just for the record, a little disclaimer, uh, every item disclosed here is publicly available through open source intelligence. So, there's no private information being leaked or being published. And obviously, uh, I haven't been involved in any illegal activity directly or indirectly. Uh, some people asked me before, is reverse engineering is legal in my just, just redaction in my country? And it is. So just for the record. Let's start with the first part, propaganda. I must clarify that uh, I left everything as is in the original language, you know, in Argentina we speak Spanish, but everything is translated. So uh, you won't have problems with things written in Spanish or in something you can understand or can read. What is propaganda, you may ask? I think a lot of you already heard about this. Propaganda is a form of communication that is used to influence an audience and trying to install an agenda, right? Since the objective of propaganda is installing an agenda, sometimes, or most of the times, uh, you might find yourself against alternative facts or lies, simply say lies. And you notice uh, statements are not objective and maybe uh, misleading. Agents of propaganda online are called trolls. You might have heard this term a lot of times before. They massively comment on social networks supporting certain movements or governments. They try to establish their own debates and their own trends and their own presence, right? And on the other hand, they also focus on diverting certain opposition debates and trends. They usually try leaving spam comments, fan camps, you know, those K pop cam fan camps, any other material that makes this threat really, really hard to follow, really uncomfortable to follow. So legit users simply leave because it's really unbearable to stay there. 
uh, other of the objective is uh, establishing negative trends against their oppositions, right? And they are also grouped into troll farms. And obviously they work together and they act like a swarm. They never come alone. How to recognize a troll? It's something that uh, might not always be exactly like this, but uh, these are the, the categories in which they fall usually. You might see a profile with lots of default configurations with no profile picture or a stock one, a fake one. And for example, on Twitter, you may see a lot of numbers in their handler because that's the default Twitter configuration. If your username is not available, it will create it and add a bunch of numbers. They share a common language. This is something, something that is pretty interesting. And they obviously agree upon a common version to answer to certain events. For example, as I stated here, the president has offshore accounts. No, that's a media operation. And as I said before, they act like a swarm. They never come alone. You might probably find them in bunches. While many governments are credited with having online agents of propaganda, for example, in Russia, they have the Trolls of Olgino, China and the 50 Cent Party, North Korea and the UFD, Venezuela with the Armada Bolivariana de Trolls, and now Argentina. They have something called Tropa K, K Troop, or Cyber K. It's not because they are a K pop supporting fandom, but it's because they support the governments of both presidents Kirchner. Nestor Kirchner and his wife, Christina Kirchner. Let's keep going. Uh, propaganda has advanced so much that there are social networks focused towards them. For example, against, you can find counter social, where the countries with the highest propaganda incense are totally blocked. For example, if you come from China, from Russia, Iran, North Korea, Syria, Pakistan, and some more, you won't be able to access counter social. You are absolutely blocked. Even if you're not a troll, even if you're a normal person, you are directly left outside. And on the other hand, in Argentina, we have a supporting social network for propaganda and for, uh, you know, for um, political posting uh, towards a single party. We have uh, facepopular.net. It was a ripoff of Facebook. And it was built, even though it was a ripoff of Facebook, it was uh, built having in mind that it should be against the establishment and imperialism. Uh, it was uh, clear a support of the Peronist party in Argentina. Only its militants participated actively. And it was supported by the Ministry of Culture, as you might see on this image. And then let's talk about trolls and censorship. Remember that uh, the goal of a troll is not only to spread messages, but to avoid its competence, and its competence, the opposition, to do so. He needs to silence other voices, not only to spread theirs. So lots of groups participate in something uh, in, in something that is really negative for the internet, that it's massively reporting of accounts from opposition on or from people that doesn't think the same as them. So they only want to uh, appeal to a single voice. Argentina is an alien terrain for this kind of things because many times the government itself tried to control social networks or internet, as we'll see next. For example, a uh, Peronist legislator proposed that users commenting on websites, forums, and the like identify themselves with their national identification number, which is like uh, the social security number in the USA. So basically, it's the, your national identification. And they also wanted yourself to uh, register with your home address too which is pretty, pretty concerning. Another senator from the Peronism proposed also a public and democratic regulation of social networks. Obviously, 
Argentine, Argentina has no uh, no power over platforms like, like Facebook or Twitter that are not residing here. And also the government published a cyber patrolling protocol and promoted it in order to cyber patrolling the social media posts. This came up with something really negative too, as we can see in this post by the Digital Rights Defense Network, arrested for tweeting. A real user of Twitter, identified with his name and surname and all his personal data, was detained, arrested, for publishing something that wasn't, uh, that the government didn't like it, basically. But the activity of trolls continues to grow. So, I decided that it should be worth trying to track them, to track their activity. <clears throat> when you browse pro-government hashtags, you find two kinds of users. The real ones, because the government has real supporters, right? And trolls or bots. So this is a mixed up apparatus, in my opinion. There were many rumors on Twitter that indicated that some users received invitations, DMs, direct messages, asking them to join the apparatus. Mostly users that were not, uh, not happy with Macri's presidents, so they tweeted something against, but that didn't mean that they were actually supporters of the current government. Uh, my goal was to get that kind of invitation, you know, for me it is like uh, the golden ticket from the chocolate factory. So I created a sock puppet account and I tried to mimic the behavior of those users who spread propaganda. It took almost a month of observation, of silent observation, trying to mimic them. And I came up with a sock puppet that was pretty much like their users. The profile photo was President Fernandez and Vice President Fernandez together. The cover photo was Vice President Fernandez giving a speech at Vélez Stadium. I was trying to follow the president, some ministers, and a few real pro-government accounts. On my description and tweets, I tried imitating their specific language and symbolism. And you might ask, how? How did you manage to learn their language? Well, I was trying to use the Twitter API to monitor the hashtags and extract those most repeated terms. And I came up with this cloud word, cloud of words, and most of them are pejorative terms to refer to opponents, for example, gorillas. Uh, now that we were speaking the same language, I was really excited to get him my invitation. On just a few hours, my sub public raised a hundred or more followers. Just for the record, my real account, my real Twitter account, has only 200 followers since 2015. Most of these users were trolls, and a few were real users too, that followed me back. Uh, I started to retweet official accounts, Obviously, these real users too. I tried answering them some messages. I jumped in on their hashtags and tried to tweet them too. And after only three days of activity, I received it by invitation, my golden ticket. A user will call DC, send me the following conversation. Give me a second. Hey, buddy, we are making Twitter groups to install hashtags. You want to join? And I was like, hey, buddy, sure. What am I supposed to do? Basically, you have to tweet the hashtags that we've sent to the group. Then, immediately, I was added to a group number 300 and something more, let's say 300. A group called Soldiers of the National Project, containing 50 people. And then, one of the first messages was this. Hey, guys. Ariel Garbars is asking us to use La Reta is responsible. I'll explain this hashtag. La Reta is the mayor of Buenos Aires City, and it's a member of the opposition. They wanted to make him responsible of something that was happening at that exact moment. 
And now you may ask, who is Ariel Garbars, by the way? Okay, at this point, I didn't know who he was. Once you see the trends of, to of that given day, La Reta is responsible, made it to the top five trends. Actually, it, sto it uh, stood on fourth place. The second trend is also a fabricated one. Um, as you may see, this is taken from getdaytrends.com. But if you ask Trendinalia, it will give you a really similar version of what I said before, but one of the trends uh, became third place. And as you can see, at least they lasted for 12 hours straight. As you may see, the number three lasted for 13 hours and a half almost. And the number four, La Red is Responsible, lasted for at least 13 hours. This uh, teaches us that propaganda interventions can be highly toxic. Again, I received another message from the group, right? With Ariel Garbars, again, we formed a group where he's the administrator and tells us what to publish and at what time, so we can get our train to always be in first place. Again, who on earth is Ariel Garbars? Okay, do you remember the first guy who sent me an invitation DC? Just 10 days later, another account from him tried to recruit me again, and it went with the very same script he used before. Hey, buddy. For making Twitter groups to install hashtags. You want to join? Hey, buddy, sure, go ahead. Okay, I'm adding you. And I was added again to another group. Again, let's say number 305, for example. Again, titled Soldiers of the National Project. Now, by accident, I was a member of two propaganda groups. I noted that there was a six digit difference between each one. For example, the first one I joined was the 301 and the second, the 307. Each group can have 50 users at most. So 49, if you do not take into account the administrator. 49 users multiplied by six new groups gives us a total of 294 users in 10 days the apparatus increases its power by almost 300 users, and that's a lot. And according to the latest group ID I managed to discover, I don't know exactly about, uh, at, at that time, right? Uh, it was the last one I managed to discover. There were at least 350 propaganda groups. So if we multiply that by 49 users, we have 17,150 propaganda users. A WhatsApp group was shared on both groups uh, among the hashtags. And upon joining, this happened, city number seven. As we can see in its name, there were seven WhatsApp groups at least, and they had 255 users, if you do not take into account the administrator. That gives us uh, around 2,000 new users. And if we zoom them with the Twitter ones, we have around 20K users. But note here, I must say the truth, there might be repeated users there. For example, I was one of the repeated users, being both on WhatsApp and Twitter. The group, as you can see below the, its name, had members from the USA, Spain, and even Germany, as you can see from their country codes. Upon joining, the administrator sent us some hashtags, some instructions, and it goes like, okay, at half past seven, we come out with dollar with it. It was basically a rant against people buying dollars. You know, in Argentina, we can buy dollars, it's restricted. We can only use our current uh, currency. That administrator that sent this message was Ariel Garbars. That name definitely rings a bell now, right? So, for closing this chapter, 
dimensions. Who is Ariel Garbar then? You have heard of him like three, four times now. He's the CEO, the CEO of Protection Digital, Digital Protection, a company which was favored with many contracts by all federal justice and various Argentine governments from the past. He was benefited to direct several state infrastructure projects. He was appointed copy, uh, computer attorney general on both elections from the 17 and 19. And it's the leader of the propaganda ring on social networks, the Lord of the Trolls. This is not as, uh, something I can say lightly. This is something that was published by Perfil newspaper. Who is the teacher of the K-Trolls? Ariel Garbars teaches how to fabricate trends on Twitter and WhatsApp, the cultural debate battle against Macri supporters. This is the structure, the final structure of this propaganda apparatus. You can have a leader, coordinators, which names are not disclosed by me. But uh, if you want to read the perfil newspaper, you can easily find it and translate it with Google. Perfil decided to publish their names too. I prefer to only disclose the leader's one. They send the hashtags or instructions to WhatsApp groups and Twitter groups and send the trolls which names are also not disclosed. Try to replicate it and make something like an infodemic. Okay, now a uh, good question is, if, is this legal, illegal, sorry. In Twitter, it is against the terms of service and their safety team actively hands these state-linked propaganda groups. And they, for example, had a lot of tracking operations against uh, China users groups. In our country, this is not illegal. And in fact, it looks suspiciously endorsed. So what tools were used for this part? Trendinalia, Trends24 in, Botometer, which is a pretty awesome tool for detecting fake profiles. Get the Trends, the Twitter API, Twitter Ruby Gem, and my own tool that will be published on GitHub, Benator Lua which I use it to give a score to user based on certain behaviors in order to see if it is about a troll or not. So what are they doing actually right now? Well, this last day they were generating hashtags supporting the use of the government application. You know, the one we will see on the next part. Surveillance. Argob coronavirus APK, or uh, this is most widely known, Cuidar COVID-19. It's a tracking application proposed by the Argentine Ministry of Modernization. Globant was the lowest bidder and that converted it into the awarded contractor for building it. It was attempting to be made mandatory by law. So if you wanted to leave your home, even for buying supplies, food, wherever, if you wanted to cross your doorstep, you must have this application installed on your own private cell phone. So obviously this has presented a lot of resistance from citizenship and they track, they back it down on this. The current version is 3.31, but I have happened to analyze only the 102, 307, and the 3.3. .3. I haven't tested the latest patch. Some of the tools I have used are JATX, APK tool, and Decompile Android, which is a pretty good online decompiler for Android applications. The first thing I did was to try to review it just uh, manually. And at first glance, I noticed a lot of broken functions, things that didn't work at all, uh, functions that didn't return uh, anything, it was like totally broken and totally clunky. <laughs> then I tried to review the code and see if I can find some lead of why it was working so badly. I found a lot of uh, dyslexic-like errors. For example, here, disabilidad instead of disabilitar, a word totally uh, badly written. In English, this is disabled. 
Again, uh, bonotes instead of botones, which in Spanish means buttons. And they say, okay, maybe my decompiler screwed it up, so I try with another. And now this behavior was repeated. So a lot of functions were actually doing nothing. Again, a lot of different things and components had the same fate as the one we saw before. For example, here, numer instead of numero, number in English. Masculio instead of masculino, which is male in English. And this explained a lot of things. The auto-evaluation feature, it's a critical feature of this app, of this application, which allows the user to, to set its symptoms and get an auto-evaluation. Well, it wasn't working at all. After reviewing the code, I found that it was written in this manner, evalua coin instead of auto-evaluation, auto-evaluation, right? So this explains why it wasn't working. Then you may say, okay, but if you call to an undefined function, your compiler must at least tell you, hey, you can't compile this, go and fix it. And I say, okay, that's right. You can call a function, you can call a function that doesn't exist. Well, the original auto-evaluation function exists, but it's empty. So it is like someone just added it in order to uh, make the compiler to stop complying, to stop uh, ranting about it. And after digging a little bit further, I found a new relic write-only token, which is not a vulnerability, but it will become handy later. Just remember this part. There were insecure JSON structure creation everywhere, a lot of times. Instead of using a JSON object, a JSON builder, they use this kind of horror you're seeing here. It's obviously totally vulnerable to injection or manipulation. And there were reference to a long dead product, Google Plus. It seems like a framework or a library aided it by default on a lot of places again. Then I happened to analyze this code with BCG, Vulnerable Core Grepper, Hot Warrior, and some other tools. And they found all of them agree on a lot of insecure and unsanitized execute calls. So you may see here, really lots of them. Even some of them could lead to SQL injection because they are they are trying to uh, construct SQL queries from unsanitized input. This application also communicates with foreign servers, as you may see here. Just for clarification, the scanner I've used was hosted in China, so you might, you might be safe to ignore the first result. These servers are not pretty much safe for storing, well, anything. I was kind of dealing with many tools. One of the most comprehensive I found was only web. I trust only open tools, uh, no sin, and to do not engage in, in any of activity. This is the map of all servers identified and all inherit the same qualification. The final grade is C. It is no PCI compli uh, compliant, it's no GD compliant, and it's so not complete life itself. A lot of missing configurations, no violation firewall, everything is exposed without any single, any single security header. And Sandroid, which is one of the biggest tools for scanning Android applications, qualifies it as risky with a risk overall score of 61 on 100. There were many operations that caught my eye that were had on base 64. As you might all know, the 64 is reversible. So when reversing it, when decoding it, I found that this application recorded a lot of uh, interesting things. The device ID, and as you might see, the demodel, 
and the device manufacturer. In this case, since I used a virtual Android device, it was able to catch any interesting data. And from the very first version, uh, they tried to introduce the possibility of permanently tracking the user. As you might see, permission beyond means access location permission. And todo el tiempo means all the time. We will see this repeated all along the code. So it is not something that was an error or something they were hoping to introduce in the following version. It's something that was planned from the start. The application has four set of data that try to run a startup. For example, mostrar uh, diálogo de actualizar forzado means show forced update dialog. And arranque de dispositivo means device startup or device on boot or the like. Also, Sandroid found that uh, this application has receivers hooked up to the boot event on the device. For example, it's looking for boot completed and quick boot power on events. This application tracks and asks for medical history. For example, as you can see here, antecedentes means, uh, how to say it, it's uh, previous diseases you have. Cancer, diabetes, pregnancy, cardiac, hepatic, renal or respiratory diseases. And all this data, don't forget that it's sent abroad to a USA server. Auto-evaluations are not stored client-side, but rather they are sent to this abroad server. This means send auto-evaluation results. So if you happen to make the auto-evaluation feature that didn't work before, remember, well, all the results, even if you're just trying and not being serious, are going to be sent. The user location, along with his, his or her DNI, which is the national document ID, as I told you before, it's like the social security number, are sent to this remote server along with your location. So send location and user that DNI, it's our, our national ID. And if the user, this is something pretty creepy, I want you to see. If the user evaluation returns that he or she is infected, the tracking service is activated in the foreground. For example, as you may see, todo el tiempo, as you may remember, it's all the time. It's one of the tracking settings. So if you have the all the time switch, switch it on, the tracking service, Servicio de Rastreo in this code, will uh, launch a foreground service, a background service. And as you may see, it checks if nombre estado infectado is true, which is st status name infected. So if you're infected against your will, the application will try to reach its home base. By default, this application allows the, uh, allows the backup mode, which obviously backups the data slice, data partition, along with the application to Google Drive. So basically, basically you're sending your private medical information to Google. Also, as we might all know already, it is unreliable for an application to diagnose you with a condition or a disease. It's even less reliable for an application to say, okay, you're not contagious, boys. I know there's a pandemic and there's a highly contagious virus out there, but you're okay, you're not contagious. Yeah, sure, you're not contagious, don't worry. Here, no so contagioso means in English, you are not contagious. It's one of the status. We all know what happened when you ask Google, for example, for medical information or when you say, okay, I have a leg cramp, I think I hurt my arm, my head is dizzy. You ask something to Google and he obviously say, you're going to die, that's all. So it is not reliable for an application to replace a doctor. Look at this, One, uh, this is a list of status for the user. No infectado means not infected, 
how on earth can an application tell you you're not infected? No contagioso means not contagious, which is worst. How can you assure a person that he, he is in contagions for his family or for some other people? Just by diagnosing it with a cell phone. And especially with an application written with all these horrors inside. This is not the first time at all that we are featured, that we are famous on the internet, as you might see from the previous uh, section. We were famous for censorship and the like. And now a lot of people are roasting Argentine developers because of this. For example, on Programming Horrors of Reddit, this is one of the posts, but there are a lot of them. They are mocking the way this code is written. As you might check on this giant if condition, you might at least, this might at least catch your eye that something is wrong, right? Also, a lot of bigger governments, most developed, uh, more developed governments, are dropping of their centralized coronavirus solutions, and we are still trying to enforce ours. And to close the chapter, this application was launched without uh, publishing an audit, a pen test report, or anything related to that. This isn't even HIPAA compliant, and we are using medical information. We are sending it abroad, uh, as we might see, as we might have seen before. Its servers do not have the best security qualification, and its components do not have the best quality. Its source code, especially, right? This is something really serious matter. Now, ask yourself what will happen if you develop this application and you have to present it for your employer. What will he or she say? Just think about it. So here are my conclusions and I'll jump into Discord for a question and answer if you would like to ask me something. Although it might seem obvious for us, tech people, always inform yourself through professional, neutral, and or verified sources. They are not easy to get, I know. But most of people still uh, fall for classic propaganda interventions, you know? Say, okay, if 1,000 people, uh, 10, people are talking about this, then it must be right. Just because a term or phrase is trending, it does not mean that it's real or represents the thinking of a majority or even, you know, that if a lot of persons or if a lot of people are talking about something, it automatically doesn't make it real. Every day, somewhere and in all times, there are groups of peoples and machines that are designed to install this agenda, these biased thoughts, these debates in society. Do not fall for them. The surveillance and monitoring of citizens is not the answer. This is my opinion, right? Particularly in the hands of governments like ours that constantly have tried to control social media and uh, the citizenship thoughts. Investing thousands in technology after neglecting the health infrastructure, it's not the solution either. An expensive app does not replace a good doctor. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Telegram, like Black Doctor, on GitHub, Mauro Eldridge, and I'm now going to make public the repository. I just uploaded it last night, so I didn't have time to publish it. It is github.com, Mauro Eldridge, dash COVID, dash 1984. And my Twitter account is Mauro Eldridge. Feel free to follow me, and to, if you want to ask me something, do not worry. I'm going to jump into the Discord server for questions. Just give me five minutes. And I hope you have liked my talk. And obviously feel free to clone the repo and to see for yourself. I have uploaded along with this slides and all the material, the white paper explaining completely in depth uh, the introduction into the propaganda apparatus and the decompiled source code and the APK binary so if anyone is interested in reversing them 
feel free to do it, don't worry. I hope you have liked it and have a nice day. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so thank much you so and much. great presentation, Mauro. And, and once again, thank you for supporting the community and you know the DEF CON Red Team Village as well as the Texas Cyber Summit. And for all the attendees, feel free, feel free to join the conversation at our Discord servers. You will find the links at the event website, which is actually in the bottom of your screen. And we will go on a, bit, a break, but uh, if you have any questions for Mauro, please go to the Discord uh, server and I'll talk to you in about 15 minutes. Thank you.